out surfing now Everybody's learning how Come on a safari with me It's always interesting to see what music each speaker gets, and I guess Fabian. I'm a you know I'm a designer, and um, I came here this morning, and, and I didn't really think about it, but then I was looking at it, and I was talking to Richard at the logo. I'm like, wow, that really looks like Metallica, and you know, I just need some lightning bolts, and then Fabian comes out with Metallica, of course. <laughs> so somehow it works. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about tech and what that means for us as leaders and as business people and as just as people. And there's this really great quote, this is, I'm paraphrasing this, from Marshall McLuhan, he's a media theorist from 1960s TV, and he said, the most human thing about us is technology. And if you think about technology, and, or think about humans in general, we're the only species that has an advanced form of technology, and we really move forward, and that sets us apart from everything else. So I, I, I grew up in Minnesota. Minnesota is in the US, if you haven't heard my, my uh, dialect. And a lot of people don't know where Minnesota is. So if, if you think about the map of America, this is New York, and this is California. Up here in the middle is Minnesota. It's like between those two things. And I grew up playing in, Minnesota was settled by a bunch of Swedish and Norwegians, and it has a similar feel. So I grew up playing ice hockey and uh, snowboarding and all those things. So yesterday, or two days ago, we were in Lux and we got to uh, snowboard a little bit and really had an epic time and the hospitality was great. So shout out to Chris and Daniel for hooking us up and Katya. So this picture here is in Minnesota, we have the saying going, you go up north and up north means you have the cities, Minneapolis, then up north is like where the cabins are, your lakes and stuff. So it's kind of like Sweden where you, know, you have a summer house. And we have a summer house as well, and this is our summer house. And this is where I spent a lot of my formative years. So you would take a two and a half hour trip you know, without mobile phones or anything up north, and you would always be asking questions. And it was like, are we there yet? How much further? Uh, the parents would be asking, do you have to go to the bathroom? You know, what's, what's happening? And it's these questions that really move us forward. And I think companies, and people more, than, more so than companies, they have to start going back to being this, this childlike idea of curiosity, asking more questions, because that's what moves us forward. So here is a drone shot, and I grew up playing, you know, we, in the summer we would do water skiing, go fishing, and all these things were tools, and it was part of technology. And, and just recently, um, I got a drone, my second drone, and I'm teaching my kids, those were the two boys on the first slide, how to fly drones and do other things. So this technology are the things that move us forward, and this idea of playing with technology. And I think a lot of companies forget that as well. Playing is the ultimate, it's the best environment to actually learn and try things out. Because when you're playing, you don't think about failure in the way of you know, some huge business pitch that might not be uh, won. Playing is really where things happen and people try things out. So three years ago, I've been at Google for three years, they asked me, to build two projects for them using one of their APIs or one of their technologies. And one of these projects was a house, this lamp here. And it, what, it, what it did is basically, since I travel a lot and my kids want to know where I am, instead of always looking on the phone or in, on the computer, I created this lamp. And what happens is the lamp uses my location and it sits above our dining room table at home in the kitchen. So you can imagine the table. And by default, it's low. So when I'm at home, it's low. And the further away I go from home, it goes higher and higher. So my kids have a general idea of where I am, how far I am. And then it rotates like a compass to the direction. So right now it's you know, more southerly because I'm in Switzerland and it's kind of maxed out at, you know, I think we're pretty high. So this idea of just trying things out with tech and trying things out and building things and just trying, you know, not being afraid to do things and questioning things. So what does location mean if it's not a Google Maps? You know, what does location feel like? And that's kind of the, the essence of also how Google works as well, just trying things out and asking really big questions. So this is not my home, but this is actually like all old school tech companies. This is the garage where Google was started. 1998, there they are in the garage, Larry and Sergey. And they came up with this, this company and the mission. And I think also when I talk to companies a lot, 
a lot of them don't have missions. They don't have a purpose other than, you know, let's, let's make some revenue next quarter or, let, you know, let's, let's do, you know, whatever it might be. And I think the mission is so important because it gives people a reason to go there. Not When all things are equal, salary and benefits and stuff, people want to have this feeling of doing something more than just what they're, what they're doing on their day to day. And I think this mission speaks to a lot of people. And it's a reason why a lot of people work at Google as well. So you know Google is a search engine, of course. But a lot of people ask, you know, why is Google doing these other projects? What's, what's in it for Google? And if you think about Google in general, like the self-driving car, Google is an engineering company. And in, how many engineers are here in the house? Quite a few, yeah, almost, almost about half. And as you know, it's engineering. It's all about solving a problem. And that's what, inherently what we do. So when we came up with ideas, or when we come up with projects or challenges, it always starts with a question. So the question here is, why is, you know, how can we make driving a lot more safe, a lot safer? So it's a question about safety. And the technology comes later. So this is a, a Rogers adoption curve map. And basically, you can, I think most Googlers, people that work at Google aren't called Googlers, are innovators or early adopters. And I think a lot of companies today and a lot of people end up the late majority and the laggards. They're kind of fearful. They're kind of in German angstgetrieben because you know they might mess up. And I think the problem with doing that is is waiting too long. Is it's you're competing against other things. But up here on the upper part, the front part of the curve, it's really about ideas and values and it's about doing things. And if you wait too long, like a lot of companies do, a lot of people do, you're going to be competing on price. And that's a huge difference between companies that are extremely innovative and companies that wait and see what's happening. Because if you're, you're going to compete on price, at some point it's going to be boiled down to what's the cheapest thing. And I think there's, it's basically a zero-sum game. So, like I said in the beginning, it all starts with questions. So, the, the loon, you know, how can we connect people, you know, with quick speeds, connectivity, and, you know, relatively easily in infrastructure, that's the loon, or the car, you know, what if it could be easier for everyone to get around and be safer? So, inherently, everything starts with a question. And I think that's, you know, if you, how many of you have kids? Some of you have kids? So, this is almost, over half of you, and all of us were kids. So either you have kids and you can relate to how they think and what they do, or you have to think back to what it was like being a kid. And being a kid is really, a child, is really about asking the questions. So why is the sky blue? How are people made? And all these questions, and you might not know them right away, and your parents might not know them, but you work towards that. I think that's what makes innovative companies really different. They set them apart from other companies. It's really about asking questions. So here are a few other things. So Alphabet, yeah, all of a sudden we've been restructured. And it allows us to do these things that we you know, inherently like to do, not just focus on the Google main thing, on search and all those other things, but do these other things. It allows us to do it a lot easier with the structure. I'm not going to go into it too much. But all of these things are really about really, it's about addressing really big problems in the world. And I think those are the things that have to be addressed. It's kind of, Bruce kind of talked about that as well. You know, it's not the next social network or whatever. We're really thinking, we call it 10x thinking or moonshot thinking. Google Ventures and then Sidewalk Labs. Calico is uh, healthcare and then Verily is also health. So I just want to show you one thing today that speaks to me. And this comes out of Google Project ATAP or Google ATAP. And what's interesting with this idea is this, this idea of we're moving, there's different eras of computing. And right now we're in the mobile, mobility era more or less. But the next era is what we call ubiquitous computing. That was coined by Mike Weisner from MIT. And the idea there is all of a sudden computers are embedded everywhere. And you just interact with computers through gestures. And I think what's interesting with that is the problem with the phone right now, and everybody has these phones, it takes all of our attention all the time. You know, either it, it's, it's, you're either looking at your phone or you're looking at the people in front of you. You can't do both. We're not multitaskers. So I think, and I believe, when ubiquitous computing comes around and there's you know, sensors and the input is more natural, then it's really about the environment. It's about the people. It's, about, it's more human-centric. And that's when things become interesting. So this project, 
addresses that as well. You know, what is the, what is the natural way to interact with your phone? And I have a video here. I have actually a couple of videos. Our team is focused on taking radar hardware and turning it into a gesture sensor. Radar is a technology which transmits a radio wave towards a target, and then the receiver of the radar intercepts the reflected energy from that target. The reason why we're able to interpret so much from this one radar signal is because of the full gesture recognition pipeline that we've built. Second video. Now we're at a point where we have the hardware where we can sense these interactions and we can put them to work. We can explore how well they work and how well they might work in products. And I find that incredibly interesting because all of a sudden the problem with technology is the man, the people, the human has to adapt to the machine, you know, this machine language. But when it becomes more natural, then it becomes a lot easier and the, bur the hurdle is a lot lower. And that's when we start playing with things. So a little bit about leadership, just one slide. And I see a, a, a change happen as well. And most of us are leaders, either you know, you're leading yourself or you're leading a team of people. But this is the more traditional way, and this is what a lot of us can relate to. There's more sticks. This has to do with if you have a donkey, you know, you got the sticks, paicha of Deutsch, right? Um, and then the hierarchy is big, linear path, and all these things. But I think when you think more creatively and more inspirational leaders, they lead with more carrots. So there's more incentives to do things. You know, it's not the, it's not the uh, paicha. It's, you know, it's like, how do, you incent how do you motivate people to do things? It's being networked. It's a huge uh, issue companies have today is these silos. You know, how do you get people to work together, especially if they're in physical, different physical locations? Um, it's nonlinear. It's not always going to be from A to B or 1 through 10. It's going to be different. There's going to be different ways of doing things. It's really trying things out. And this is maybe this is a, an issue that the senator was talking about, you know, this idea of perfection. And, and in Silicon Valley, it's, everything's a little more scrappy. And I think... That's, that's almost the more childlike way to do things, just try things out, you know. And then taking risks, and we don't have to address that much, but I think that it's so, so important. And if you go back to also the childhood, it's really about trying things out. So we were, uh, like I said, we were snowboarding and, and skiing, and I had, we have a place in Colorado, but I hadn't been for four years, and, and uh, our group was very advanced. So, you know, I, at some points, you know, going down the hill, I did feel a little bit like, ooh, this is a little bit sketchy, but you just have to try these things out. And I've, I remember growing up snowboarding. I grew up with, like, uh, Jeff Brushy and uh, all these really old school stuff, Tom Sims, and, uh, and that era. But when I look at the progression of snowboarding or skateboarding, I said skateboard as well, it's amazing what they do today. And it's really about risk-taking. It's just... It's just, they're so far, they're all, they all skate like Rodney Mullen, which is a freestyle. It's kind of inside baseball. But basically, the point there is, as far as Google goes, it's we're not a conventional company. And, and the point, I think it surprised a lot of people with Alphabet, but it also shows that when, when Larry, you know, talks about this stuff, it, it's true. You know, it's the essence of what we believe in at Google. So I want to end with two slides. And the, the first thing is, it really is not always about the answers. It's more about the questions. And I kept talking about this as well. When you think about research or anything you do, you know, even if you go to a, like, on a really simple level, like you're going to a bar and you want to talk to someone, you know, you're questioning yourself, but you have to try these things out. But as far as leadership goes, there's tons of questions you guys have. But if you don't think about these questions, you'll never get to the answer. But I think the biggest question here is, does your culture celebrate leaning into the past or thinking about the future or predicting the status quo? Because really, I think one of the biggest differences also is people that are more curious, they're more optimistic as well. You know, they're more willing to put themselves out there. And you might not always get the answers right away, and I think that's, that's okay. You know, and maybe you have to write them down because as humans, you know, we're built, you have a question and you have to find that answer. But if you write all your questions down and put it away, you will work, you know, you'll live to find those answers. And I think that's really important. So I'm just going to end, fittingly, because I think DJI is here, that drone thing, with uh, this nice video of last summer in uh, Minnesota. Thank you very much. <laughs>